Hi, OMSD teachers and support staff. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you some information about how we can look at student writing with a generous lens and how we can use standard-based rubrics to drive our instruction for writing. My name is Laura Smart. I'm the district TOA for English Language Arts. Today's agenda for this mini PD, we're going to be looking at something called the Descriptive Review Protocol, where we look at student student writing through a descriptive lens. Then we'll be looking at how we can use standard-based rubrics in order to analyze student work and decide where to go next with our instruction. For our learning target, we are going to be using a protocol today um, to help us look at student work through a generous, generous and descriptive lens. And we are going to identify what we see the student doing well in order to determine where to go next with our writing instruction. We'll know we're successful after viewing today's PD when we're able to apply this descriptive review protocol to our own student samples in order to determine standard-based next steps for their writing. So I'm gonna introduce you to a protocol called descriptive review and it is a protocol that you can use when looking at your own student writing samples. This is also something that you can do in a PLC with your grade level team in order to look at some of your student writing samples in order to talk about where to go next with your instruction. So when we talk about being descriptive when looking at student work, we're going to be talking about looking at exactly what you see the student doing in their work. And participants, um, if you're doing this with a grade level team, everyone in the team should agree that that's what is in the work. So we're gonna be very descriptive in what we see. And I'm gonna show you an example in just a moment on that. So when we talk about descriptive language, um, when looking at student writing, we are going to talk about what we see happening. So if I were to just um, show you this example in an image, I might look at this image and say, I see triangles. I see blue. I see red. So I'm talking about exactly what I see. I see dotted lines. When we go into other forms of interpretation and evaluation, when we're looking at student work or we're even looking at a drawing like we are in this example, we start to move into interpretation and when we start to add meaning to what we see. And we know that we're moving into this interpretation area because not everyone would agree. Uh, a lot of time it's when we start to base um, what we're seeing on prior knowledge or experience. So again, looking back at this picture, I had said before, I see a triangle when I was being descriptive. I might say, I see a volcano in Hawaii. Well, that is based on my prior experience. Not everyone who looks at this image is going to see a volcano in Hawaii. So that's interpretation. I'm starting to use what I'm seeing, but also including my own interpretation of it. We want to be careful of doing that um, when we're looking at student work. So we're adding our own personal experience. I could also say, I see a broom. Well, not everyone sees a broom when they look at this, they may see something different. So that's adding my own interpretation or personal experience. When we're talking about evaluation, we're talking about adding judgment to something. And we want to, again, be careful when we're looking at student work to not apply our own judgments or evaluation because our goal today is to look at what the students are doing well and build off of that in our instruction. It's not at the evaluation time yet, because uh, this is looking at pre-assessments um, moving into a genre writing unit. So if I were to be um, using evaluation, I might say something like, wow, 
the person who drew this must have had art lessons. So I'm adding my own judgment or evaluation to it. Now let's talk about this in terms of student writing. So if I was looking at a writing sample and I was using description, I might say, I see periods. If I were to move into the two other areas, let's say I were to move into interpretation and start to uh, base it on my own prior knowledge and experience, I might say, this student understands the use of punctuation. So I don't know for sure if the student understands punctuation just because I see periods. So I need to be careful um, making these assumptions. If I were to move into evaluation, I could say something like, this student probably struggles with reading. So maybe the student has um, you know, a lot of misspellings or periods um, in the wrong places. And then I start to add judgment. I assume that this student probably struggles with reading or writing. And again, I should be only looking at what the student produced and not making my own judgment or evaluation at this time. So this protocol uh, called descriptive review is where we're going to really emphasize the need to look at student work descriptively without moving into the interpretation or the evaluation phase. So remember that description is going to be grounded on descript describing what we see, not on judgment or evaluation. The process uh, can be formal if you're doing it in a PLC. You can take turns speaking and everyone is sharing what they see. I'm going to walk you through it through a student example now. This is one of my old students writing samples from the beginning of our informational unit. So I wanted to see what do students already know how to do with informational text. So I asked each student to write about a topic of their choice and provide me some information. When we're looking at student work, if you're doing this on your own, or if you're doing it with a colleague, or your grade level team, it's always a good idea to ask someone who doesn't know who the student is to read the work out loud when possible. Because that teacher doesn't know the student and wouldn't e apply any type of judgment to the reading. It's a good idea also when we read this to, instead of reading it, emphasizing on the errors, we should try to read it giving the student the benefit of the doubt of how we think that student would want the work to sound. So I'm going to go ahead and read this. Motorcycles and cars, illustrated by Murray. Motorcycles are cool. Motorcycles are fast. Cars are so, so tight. So you'll notice when I read that, I read it how I think the student would have wanted it to be read. And I ignored some of the mistakes in order to focus really on the student's ideas and look at it in a positive lens. So when we're looking at using the descriptive review protocol, we are going to go through three different rounds. And you can take notes on each of the rounds if this is a student from your class as uh, the teachers are looking at the writing or as you're looking at the writing. So the first step, we're going to really focus on just what do we see the student doing. I also wanted to mention it's really important when you put a sample in front of your peers, try not to tell us anything about the student. We want to look at what can the student do in this one sitting. So we don't need to know if the student has an IEP or if the student woke up late that day or if that student only has one parent. Um, we don't need to know anything like that. We just want to be able to look at this in a very descriptive way and just look at what can the student do in their writing. And we're going to use that evidence in order to determine where to go next with our instruction. So let's take a look at Murray. So I'm first going to read it um, to my group, which I did already um, for you guys, but I'm always going to put it up and then read it. And then the next step is to move into the descriptive review. So we're going to take turns talking about different things that we see. I could say, I see periods. 
I could say, I see an underline. I see capital letters. I see repetition of the word so. So that would be an example of how I might talk about what I see. Then the next step is start to move into what does the student seem to be on the verge of understanding and how um, or knowing how to do. So this is gonna be related to skills. So I'm gonna take a look at this writing. I'm gonna talk about what I think the student's on the verge of understanding. I don't know for sure, um, just looking at this one sample, um, what the student knows for sure, but I can make some guesses as to what the student might be on the verge of understanding. So one of the things I think that Murray is on the verge of understanding is that your writing piece needs a title because he has uh, the topic at the top and it's underlined. Another thing that I think Murray is on the verge of understanding is the importance of stating your topic and staying on that topic. So I noticed that he said motorcycles are cool, motorcycles are fast. Then he moved into talking about cars. So that might be an area of growth for him um, that we make sure that we talk about the same topic all throughout the piece. But he does seem to know that you state your topic. This is also a time um, during round two that you can bring in your standard based rubrics in order to identify what should the student be able to do by the end of the year for your grade level in this genre. So what I did was I took um, all of the grade levels and I created standard based rubrics for narrative, informational and opinion argument writing. And I'll be supplying you with those resources along with this video so that you can access them and make a copy and use them with your students. So what you would do is after giving a pre-assessment, to the students and having them write, you would take a look at their writing next to this standard based rubric using the descriptive review protocol. So in round two, I'm going to identify what is he on the verge of understanding? So I'm gonna take a look at the standards and see where how he's doing with the standards. The first one says write inform informative explanatory text in which they name the topic. So I'm gonna think, did Murray write an informational or explanatory text in which he named the topic? I would say looking at Murray's writing, that is a strength for him. He did state the topic, uh, motorcycles and cars, and he did name that topic. The second one says supply some facts about the topic. So I'm gonna look at Murray's writing again to see if he supplied some facts about the topic. Motorcycles are cool, motorcycles are fast, cars are so, so tight. So I can take notes in this section that I think it's a strength for him to be able to supply some facts about the topic. An area of growth might be in order to get him to connect the two topics um, or stick to one topic. The third one says provide some sense of closure. So I'm going to look back at Murray's writing and it says at the end, cars are so, so tight. So thinking about that, I'm trying to identify, do I think he tried to or is on the verge of understanding that a writer needs to have some type of closure to their writing? And in this case, I think that is a strength for him, um, that he's starting to understand that. But there's also some area of growth there. Um, he may need a mini lesson on how do you create a sense of closure in your writing. Then the third round, we're going to determine based on what we saw in the writing and what the student was on the verge of understanding, what one mini lesson we would teach this child tomorrow based on that information and evidence that we have provided. So looking at Murray and looking at the things that we said that Murray was able to do well, I might say that 
a mini lesson for Murray would be on how to make sure that you state both topics if you're talking about more than one thing. Maybe I want to show him that good writers always start with and name both of the topics they're talking about instead of um, bouncing around. Another thing that I might work with Murray on is his use of um, capitals in the middle of a word. So I can talk to him about how capitals only go at the beginning when it's naming the topic or when it's the first letter. So I wanna determine where my next steps would be based on the evidence that's provided in this writing sample. Now I wanna show you my next step, which would be to teach the writing unit. So let's pretend like Murray wrote that first page as his pre-assessment, and then I determined the things that I wanted to do my mini lessons on in order to help him grow as a writer. Now I'm going to show you what he was able to produce just two months, uh, just six weeks later, uh, about a month and a half later, in informational text for his post-assessment. So this is after he's received some instruction in some of those areas that we talked about. So I'm going to go ahead and read Murray's writing. And again, I'm not going to front load any information about the student. Things that go fast. Party trucks have TVs. They are so cool. I just want to go. Cars go fast and I like it so bad. I like fast cars. Motorcycles go fast like Dash. Trucks go faster than a little dog. Trucks have engines, that's why they go so fast. But that's why they are fast. Motorcycles go fast like Dash. Cars are almost faster than motorcycles and race cars, but I know that cheetahs are fast, but they get tired and cars run out of gas. I saw a tight car on Pimp My Ride and they was cool. So as I'm reading this, I'm noticing a lot that we had focused on in our instruction during my many lessons for this unit. One of the things I worked with the students on was comparisons. So you'll see the use of comparisons. I also worked with Murray on naming his topic and trying to stay on topic. So just taking a look at this, you can see evidence of his learning from the first sample to the second sample. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for growth. So again, um, when I'm looking at the post-assessment, I can also use this sheet to look over how Murray did in relation to the standards. And I can determine where I would go next with my instruction when I move back into informational later in the year. So what I'd like you to think about now is how you might give your students a pre-assessment before moving into one of your writing units and to think about how you could use this chart and the descriptive review protocol in order to identify what you see in your student work what the students are on the verge of understanding or knowing how to do, and what you would teach these writers next. This will help you to determine some standard-based lessons for your students that will directly target their needs. So in this PD, I am going to be providing you with all of the standard-based rubrics and the resources for the descriptive review protocol. Um, you can just write it in your notebook with the three columns in order to keep track and then record also on the rubrics um, in order to identify what the student's strengths are and areas for growth. I hope you enjoyed this video and you are welcome to reach out to me at any time if you ever have any questions or just want some feedback on your student writing or your planning. My email address is laura.smart at omsd.net. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching this episode of the Curriculum Cafe. Click like and subscribe to join the cafe for more classroom tips from the TOA team.